A few weeks back, I got hired to come down and film for the Three-Legged Dog Sideshow Act in Austin, Texas. One of the performers, Fifi Switchblade, she's worked with us in PWR a few times doing like stage handing and helping with prop setup, that sort of thing. So I thought, you know, let's, we gotta help out fellow artists. And I wasn't quite sure what to expect. They were putting nails in their head along with switchblades and gutter spikes, which was crazy, dancing on glass, jumping onto Legos, knife throwing, there was juggling, there was mental flossing with a balloon, and which then became a balloon animal, and the bucket. That's all I'm gonna tell you about that, and you gotta watch the video to find out what this is, what the bucket is, and why it makes people so uncomfortable. <laughs> this week, let's go check out the Three-Legged Dog Sideshow in Austin, Texas. Burlesque slash sideshow performer. I don't have to kill away more than that. I'm Dammit Dan Block, the amazing face, founder of the Three Legged Dog Sideshow, director and co-host, the awesome menagerie. Just, just a swell guy. And a goddamn American hero. God damn right. <laughs> so, Vivi, what stories do you have from the circus? <laughs> what, Not what got you into this? How did I get started performing? I originally moved here for school. Um, and he has a master's. I have a master's degree in criminal justice and statistics. This is what I do now. One of us has a prison record, and one of us is just sweet Jewish boy from the South Suburbs of Chicago. I am not the sweet Jewish boy, so. <laughs> Figure that one out. I started taking pole dancing lessons at Brass Ovaries. There's an audition for Frisky Business Burlesque, and I was like, what the hell? The worst I can say is no, so I auditioned, and I surprisingly got in, and that was seven years ago, so I've been performing for seven years. Wow. Yeah, it's great. It's a long time. <laughs> well, I moved to Austin to be a musician. Uh, it's going great. See. When I moved here, I was doing this project called Endymion is the Moon. Nobody can pronounce it, but it's fine. Uh, where I looped cello, violin, guitar, piano, synthesizers, electric drums, and vocals uh, to create structured background to do storytelling on top of, although it was just singing, it was folk music, but I'd call it more than it was. Uh, but nobody ever thought for that, barely got paid. So, instead of hammering a nail in my face and people were just like, oh, here's $20. Oh my God, you're amazing. Yeah. But uh, I learned how to hammer a nail in my face in 2000 and like 11 or 12 from a gentleman out in West Virginia. And then I moved to Austin and I found the museum of the weird on 6th Street. Uh, I, when they let me start performing, I thought it would be a way to make stupid money on the weekends, 20 or 30 bucks, up my skill set, just have fun. I had enough money to support myself, so also it's just more fun. It's not more yeah, fun. Yeah, I don't have to deal with crackhead trying to buy crack pipes, it's that is deal with people that want to vomit. It. It's fun. When I first started doing the electric blockhead, the taser blockhead, where you hammer down your face, do it with the stun gun, I learned that from a gentleman named Brian Smith out of Safety Third Theater in Raleigh, North Carolina. At the point in time, and I don't think any of us really knew this, but there was only about eight people in the world performing that stunt. It was invented like 10 years ago by a guy named Christopher Campbell, Phoenix Fire out of London, Ontario, represent. Uh, and then there were, none of us were doing it. So when I, met, when I came out to Texas, started showing people, nobody ever seen it before. Out of the eight people that were doing it, Six of them lived in North Carolina, one of them lived in Canada, and one of them is me. So, that became my signature thing, I got booked a lot for that. Now it's probably the balloon dog. Uh, the first time I ever did that, people just were like, oh, That's neat! It's actually cool. Uh, and even America's Got Talent so audition coming nice. up for that too, so... See how that goes. But right now, I would just say it's probably less the stunts and more who... I'm trying to make it so that who we are as people are the most recognizable things. Um, I think if I have a signature act, what, for burlesque I would say it's my Texas Chainsaw Massacre act and I have full leather face mask on and um, I angle grind off of a chainsaw. Um, I didn't realize how dangerous I was till somebody said, you know, grinding off a chainsaw, you run the risk of grinding off one of the... Links of the chain? Yeah, and hitting you in the face and I'm like, ha! I never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, a new signature act would definitely be the bucket. Not the switchblade blockhead, the bucket. Mm. We're not talking about that now. Now, the ball is resting about three to five inches. <laughs> Still in, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't know the word. He doesn't like the bucket. Wait, wait, you 
actually do have the bucket here, don't you? I do yeah, have the I bucket. Oh, oh, and also this. What's that for? It's a weight. Strongest vagina in Texas. We're a lot. Yeah. It's a rolling rock bucket. That makes me. It's so much worse for some reason. <laughs> had beer in here. Show them the bucket. And I walked around with it. Oh it's actually heavier than you think. I've done the eye hook lift with the the bucket before. It sucks. So the buckets. Um, I do what is called a vagina lift. <laughs> I wear a kegel ball, <laughs> and it goes. Yes, inside, and there's a little loop that hangs from it, and so. I clip this bad boy to the loop and it hangs from my body like so. It's now become a thing, uh, mostly for tips. It works it's great. Maker. It is a money maker. Now we have a yo yo. Respect. Deep mm. Worst I ever hurt myself. Two times so far. First one takes a cake on my birthday. I had a show uh, about five years ago at the Marquesa, which is not a venue anymore. Uh, I was the opening act. I remember asking for no spotlight, and I walk out on stage, and there's a spotlight. You know, you can't see anything when there's a spotlight in your face. Of about a minute into my act, I just walk off the stage. Just uh. walk off the stage. Um, the first instinct in me was to get up and keep going, and I realized I can't get up. And the music was still the story. music was still playing. People in the front row were like, "She's not moving. She's not moving. This isn't a part of the act." And uh, Lizard Man's wife ran down to uh, check on me because she's a nurse. Ha ended up cutting the music. They called the ambulance, and where the producers were trying to get me to go backstage, and they're like, "You can't move her. We don't know like what's wrong." So the ambulance shows up. EMS guys are like, "What did you break?" <laughs> and I remember looking at them like. Isn't that your job? I don't know, I fell. Broke a table, broke a couple chairs on the way down. Broke up with my boyfriend over the weekend. Is that the show we got done before we went on stage? No, that was a Halloween show. Okay, heard. Had my heart broken at a show. Um, so um, they put me on the gurney and that's when I felt the pain. Um, and I remember screaming and they wheel me out. Mind you, there's a show still going on. I'm the opening act. Opening act. They wheel me off. Um, and then the MC was like, it's Fifi's birthday! Let's sing happy birthday to her! The whole venue starts singing happy birthday and I remember lifting my arm up in the air and just flipping everyone <laughs> off as they wheeled me out. Then, fun part, and then once they put me in the ambulance, the guy was like, do you know who Dr. Feelgood is? And I was like, the Molly Crusoe? And he was like, no. Check it. And he, no check. He injected me with morphine. And I was like, oh, that doctor feel good. Ended up shattering my kneecap, tearing my ACL and my MCL. Uh, I could not walk. I was out of commission for about a year. Pretty much, I learned how to walk again. So now I have a metal plate and two screws and cadaver tissue holding my knee together. Cadaver tissue. Cadaver tissue. I'm like a zombie. Oh, it's the second one, Pete. Second one. <laughs> <laughs> was actually my first show with Lestrange and um, ran straight into a grinding belt. Um, grinding belts look like a cod piece with a spike. Like a narwhal, if you will. Yes, a piece of rebar usually just jutting out. Yes. Uh, so I want to pause here. I want to say where I was at this point in time because I was drunk uh, over at the merch table. And I get a I was also by, on a date, by the way. Oh god, a terrible date. I'm at the merch table and I get approached by somebody that says, Hey, do you have a first aid kit? And I said, Ah, uh, kind of. It's really only it's for my needles. It's really only good if there's blood everywhere. And they said, Yeah, where is it? <laughs> so I ran into the grinding belt like so, which is a long spike. Um, it hit me right in my nose. I have a scar, scratched my eyelid. Hit me so hard my contact popped out. I didn't realize anything happened. I just remember bouncing back and one girl yelling, oh sh. Yeah. And I was like, what? And then, oh. <laughs> Down. I have five stitches in my face. Had my eyelid glued shut because it wasn't deep enough for stitches, but too deep to leave open, and a bruised cornea. Two things. One, I walk back and just try to scream, we got holes and tissues against it. We can just say this is good. Are you going to go to hospital? They're going to be like, you want like, the stitches? But like, I think you're fine. Uh, 
and two, I made Phoebe autograph the poster that I just bought, and I still have it just in the middle, in like childish, I'm busy <laughs> hair, Phoebe Switchblade. Right. Did it get any blood on it? Did it get any blood on it though? Like Classy. I, it I know. I we still can. I can. No, that one's gone. I've. And it's more like I just bleed a lot. Uh, but given the nature, like I do grind shows, which means I do anywhere between 14 and 24 shows a day, like four or five days a week downtown. So every once in a while, you just be in the middle of a show talking to an audience and, oh, st oh, okay. And you're like, well, I'm still going to do something and I'm still going to bleed. Gotta keep going. Yeah, I threw a balloon at the wall last week and I had a big blood smear. That show his baby. It's still there. I haven't cleaned it off. Oh, yeah, I'm a little lazy, but it's fun <laughs> to like show audience members that everything's real. That's my but blood. Like yeah, that? same thing. I guess there's, there's, there's blood. Not back here. Oh, so like, you wouldn't be able to tell. It's actually. I was looking for there's here. probably blood from. There was blood from Halloween, but I think they cleaned it up finally. There was too many days of. Is there blood on the floor here? Is yeah. it real blood? Is it real blood? Is it fake blood? We've got. But yeah, for me, nothing. Uh, tonight's probably the night where something really bad happens. But all the new stunts are working on. Fifi's the one in danger, not me. Sort of I didn't get a. Oh yeah, look at that. It's from the trap. the bottom there. From the trap. What, what trap yeah. was it? Is that a coyote trap? This is what I had my elbow stuck in yesterday. I hate these. I'll point that out. I like them. I'm fond of them. This opens up like so. Slam your elbow into this piece right here. It clamps down in it. All right, so how's this working? <laughs> so to set it up. God, this thing is so fucking scary. It Sorry, is. Four. <laughs> I don't like setting these up. I don't either. What this I'm not going to set it up all the way, but like so. You just wait for it to snap. Yeah. Okay. Don't take your foot off. Um, this is basically what it looks like. Um, this metal part is where you slam your elbow and it'll clamp down on it. Move your hand. And three, two, one, up. Oh. Just like that. Yeah. Left a nice little bruise. Trade school is an option. You could have been an electrician or maybe a plumber. Hitting muscles and bone is not as bad as pinching the skin really tight. Which is where it got me. Yeah, once it grabs the like this down here, then you're gonna be in a lot of pain. Yeah. How do you feel with the sideshow performance scene there versus Austin? Everyone's closer as well. I love it. Uh, everybody moved community. away. There's like four of us and it's me and Fifi, um, Juan, Martinez. Juan Martinez, who will be here tonight, and then other people who just we don't uh, gel with as much or don't support what they want to do as much as what, how we want to do it, or how they treat performers, or how they treat the community. I mean, the whole point of doing the Austin Menagerie, first Sundays of the month, the highball. 7 to 9 p.m. for free. For free. Uh, it was supposed to just be a place I want to hang out with my friends. But I'm, I have incredible social anxiety. Uh, most performers I find do, and more yep. comfortable in front of the stage and in an audience. Uh, so if you force yourself to go out and hang out with your friends, it's not really vaudeville shows. All the shows that go on each month are burlesque with the occasional variety act. Uh, I wanted to create more community. When you go out to Houston, it's just, it's everyone. Everyone knows each other. Everyone goes to their shows. Everyone hangs out. Um, but the flip side of that is more performers means more saturated market means there's less opportunities for growth. Mm -hmm. That said, I can use more friends. Three-legged dog side show on Instagram. Feel free to reach out. To talk about it? No, we're about to. Oh, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, so pole sizes. Everyone has a different nasal size, nasal cavity size. Yes, that. Um, mine is long and tall, so I can fit stuff in like this. Like so. Check that out. Look at that little right in there. Dance. It's the virgin gaping. Now, uh, <laughs> my hole originally was about, I, thank you. My hole was about originally as large as this. and breaking bones and showing you the side, I was able to get to this side. That wasn't exciting enough, so that eventually broke enough bones and made no space. I was able to get this one made. This is my El Lurcio, out of the UK. And this one got me really far, but eventually it got me up to gutter spikes, which you really want, because you can buy this at Home Depot. Is that the one I got you? No, I bought more. That's about as big as I can go, though it's starting to get a little loose. I have one more that I want to go, but it makes this feeling in my face <laughs> not pleasant. For my namesake, one of my signature acts is a double switchblade blockhead. Allow me to demonstrate. So these are actual switchblades. Don't try this at home, kids. 
Again, I also have a master's degree. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> this is gonna go up my nose, through my nasal cavity, to the back of my skull. I don't do my invites until the night before for some reason. Oh. Uh, I do my, I do my uh, when I make the uh, event. Uh, uh, <laughs> cha -cha. Oh, I was impressed by the fact you had a conversation with the and juggle at the same time. Oh, it's it's kind of what you gotta do. It's kind of you gotta do it. So, cats and the tiger woman told me pretty much to get good at juggling, you just do it all the time. Uh, and then you start talking while doing it, and then you're eventually just programming yourself to do it. I want to juggle knives and fire. I have an idea for a routine where I want to run a unicycle and juggle fire. Block had a nail and then blew it a kazoo and Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> That's how we're gonna open the show. Nothing too crazy.